Thank you for joining the ones changing the world. India's first future tech meets sustainability podcast. I'm your host Eddie Avil and this is the second episode of Future Decoded where I bring to you my insights and foresights on technology, sustainability and its impact on you, me and the rest of the world. The topic of discussion is titled Climate Collapse Humanity's Final Countdown and I want to start with August 2021 when United Nation had declared a code red for humanity. Yes, a code red for humanity. And Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nation, had quoted that if governments do not stand up and lead, we are headed for terrible human suffering. Well, what is code red and why code red? So the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change had created and shared a report with undeniable and clear evidence that the greenhouse gas emissions from all of our fossil fuel burning along with the deforestation going on is responsible for the global warming and that it would put billions of life at immediate risk and it would only get worse if nations, industries, and people fail to change. Well, it's three years post the United Nations Code Red warning. What have nations done? What have industries done? And what have we as people done? What we have done is continued a march towards this existential crisis. We all seem to be enslaved by the fossil fuel empire that holds the entire civilization to hostage. And this isn't mere corporate greed. It's an orchestrated planetary homicide. The stark reality is that this capitalist machinery, it was never designed to pause, reflect or reform. Because this profit at any cost, business as usual mentality, is leading us towards a path of irreversible damage. We have been engineered for perpetual consumption by society, the banking industry, the advertising industry, so that we continue our consumption without conservation, which would eventually lead to resource depletion and a civil war. And these fossil fuel companies and empires act as a puppet masters. They pull all the strings of the governments, manipulating markets and suffocating this clean energy transition that we have been forever promised and have been waiting for. Sun has been giving us free energy. We already have solar panels. Ask yourself why this clean energy transition has been delayed. Each passing day, without this change, isn't just a missed opportunity, it's a premediated ecocide. While the United Nation warning of Code Red has echoed into a void, fossil fuel companies have been toasting record profits. The governments have been drafting meaningless pledges and, and these banks have been financing or human extinction. Wish the powers that be realize that greed is a black hole and it will consume everything in its path, including them. And these billionaires with their bunkers are not safe. And these tech maximalists who believe that geoengineering and this possible artificial in general intelligence that they're building might possibly reverse global warming. I'm not saying that geoengineering and AGI, whenever we get it, might not play a role. But I think that it's wishful thinking. I don't even think that we've got the privilege of the time. Like India has a net zero goal of 2070. Russia has got a net zero goal of 2060. Ask yourself the question, do we actually have the privilege?
I had interviewed Gaia Errington on my podcast, and I'm going to share the link so that you can go through the podcast. The reason I ended up interviewing Gaia because of the news in 2021 about MIT's World Three model, which had predicted that a global civilization collapse is imminent around the year 2040. 2050 there were other headlines which were screaming that in fact we are ahead of schedule so that caught my attention and i dug a little bit deep into it and i interviewed guy arrington what i found out that mit had created this report called the limit to growth report and also created this computational simulation model called world 3 model which was aimed to analyze the long term consequences of exponential economic and population growth in the context of finite resource availability in our world right so just to kind of give you a little more details of this limit to growth model and this world 3 computational model they took five critical data to analyze one was population food production industrial output pollution and consumption and they fed it through this onto this world three model and mit concluded that if current growth trends continued unchecked humanity would reach its limit within a century leading to a sudden decline in both population as well as industrial capacity in 2020 gaia herington wanted to double check the limit to growth and computational model to see if what was predicted in 1972 stands true in 2020 so she took 2022 data population food production industrial output pollution as well as consumption fed it to the same algorithm world 3 model and what she found out was there was four possible scenarios so a two were business as usual uh, mod scenarios which predicted a global collapse within 2040 2050 reason because around that point of time it we would lead to resource depletion as well as pollution which would lead to a civil war then there was a stabilized world and comprehensive technology scenario which offered a glimmer of hope for a sustainable future if humanity completely changed its path let me kind of explain to you what these four scenarios were so there was business as usual model uh, and one and business as usual model two this scenario assumed that everything continues as it is now with no major changes in policies or technologies we go on create uh, con- creating uh, products we go on uh, consumption without consum- conservation and which would lead to a population uh, decline as well as resource depletion which would eventually lead to a civil war so this was the scenarios or a prediction of those two models business as usual one and business as, as usual two a stabilized world model uh, scenario visioned a future where society completely shifts its values towards sustainability and that would lead to a po- population growth and maybe stabilization of, of the world and then there was comprehensive technology model in this scenario it's assumed that the technology advancements will enable humanity to overcome environmental limits this includes innovation that improves efficiency and reduces waste while this scenario offers hope to technology but it relies heavily on the assumption that such advancements will be developed and implemented effectively one of the most alarming indicators of climate change is the potential collapse of the atlantic meridional overturning circulation amoc for short this critical current ocean current regulates the weather pattern across europe and north america think of it as earth's heat distributor and currently it is at its weakest in a thousand years if the amoc were to weaken or collapse it could have significant and far reaching impact on the global weather it would lead to temperature changes which would lead to too much of heat or too much of cold 
extreme weather events, sea level rise, uh, then marine ecosystem disruption, which would affect our fish population, as well as the food and livelihoods of people who depend on fishing. A weaker AMOC would decrease the ocean's ability to absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, which would potentially accelerate global warming as greenhouse gases would then remain in the air. The Thwaites Glacier, often referred to as the Doomsday Glacier, is losing approximately 50 billion tons of ice annually. That's equivalent to 50,000 Empire State buildings of ice just gone. If it collapses completely, it could raise sea levels by several feet, displacing millions in the coastal areas. Then there is this United Nations Climate Change Conference, also called Conference of Parties, short for COP. And the recent edition concluded at Azerbaijan. Last year's edition was held at UAE. Both are the largest oil producing nation in the world. It's like hosting an anti-smoking conference in a tobacco factory. These nations, the entire economies are built on the very industry destroying our planet. For 29 years, COP has perfected the art of achieving nothing. While delegates fly private jets to luxury venues, engaging in elaborate ceremonies of promising net zero targets, which are always decades away, the real agenda plays out in back rooms where fossil fuel lobbyists, they actually outnumber more than the national delegates. And the nations continue its absurd blame games the developing nations are pointing fingers at the, the developed ones and vice versa. And this keeps on going while both groups continue expanding its fossil fuel infrastructure. This isn't just a failure. It's designed to maintain business as usual while pretending to address humanity's greatest crisis. While this business as usual and the blame game carries on, the world and we, the people, are being affected. Because of all of this, we are losing trillions of dollars globally in economic loss because of these erratic weather events and obviously millions of lives. And this is only going to get worse from here. Last month in Saudi Arabia, a desert saw unprecedented snowfall for the very first time. A cyclone Ramal in Bangladesh in May 2024 forced the evacuation of more than 900,000 people, causing extensive economical damage with the flooding as well as loss of lives. In April 2024, Dubai received more than a year and a half worth of rainfall in a single day in 2024 hours. There was a study done by the World Weather Attribution that showed that the reason of the torrential rains was global warming. And in Hush Hush Stone, there was also uh, some suggestions that this could be because of the Dubai government's geoengineering project of cloud seeding for creating artificial rain. There were pictures taken from space recently which showed that Delhi and Pakistan was covered in a toxic smog. Delhi had to declare an, an emergency. People were unable to breathe they were unable to see. And this was because of the crop burning. The farmers burned their crops. And because of the festive season, Diwali, as well as the marriage season. And Pakistan, there were hundreds of children who were reportedly hospitalized. In October 2024, Spain saw untimely torrential rain with flash flood. The climate equilibrium is messed up. And like every organism, Climate 2 is a carefully calibrated network. And we humans have been treating the planet as a resource to be exploited rather than a living, breathing system to be respected. And the results are plain to see. And it's only going to get worse from here. Don't say that we won't warn. Every climate scientist, every reports that were churning out said the same thing over and over again. Climate crisis is an existential crisis. But I don't think anybody was listening. 
now we are past the point of gentle warning and hopeful thinking we are now in the end game where each degree of warming pushes billions towards uninhabitable zones where each year of inaction will cost millions of lives where each decision to maintain business as usual model will be a decision to accept mass extinction as collateral damage the clock isn't ticking anymore it's screaming and unlike every other challenge humanity has faced this one doesn't care about a politics or wealth or our beliefs and we are all front row witnesses to the greatest existential threat humanity has ever faced if you are a climate denier then take a pause and look around remember the weather patterns from your childhood and compare them to today's increasingly erratic weather this is all because largely of a economic boom leading to consumption without conservation the construction boom is leading to bridges roads skyscraper that's really cool but the growing infrastructure has got a price to pay the price is pollution in the form of cement paint noise and dust pollution and these growing consumption obviously is churned out industries and factories producing more goods cheaper shinier and faster leading to more consumption without conservation leading to environmental degradation the internet which was supposed to free us is actually caging us i per se understand and acknowledge the benefits of social media but also would like to point out the downside of social media today we have hundreds and thousands of online friends but how many friends do we actually have physically and we are becoming more and more envious of others reason because the social media wants us to believe that everybody is blessed everybody is having a great time because everybody is eating in these fancy restaurants wearing the best clothes holidaying everybody is living an awesome life and the ones who don't have obviously want it and it creates a desire and this social media companies they actually know it and they are manipulating these senses by urging you or nudging you to buy things even when you don't need it because of which we are all becoming more and more fake cold inward sad depressed and isolated we are eating more we are consuming more and what's the output of it well more debt more loan well the bank isn't letting you go because it's holding a carrot in front of you and it wants you to take more loans more unnecessary loans loans that you don't actually need loans for what to keep you caught up in the debt cycle so you buy things more for what ask yourself do you actually need those big cars big house and the advice advertising industry they sell you lies that more is better which fuels the cycle of debt of overconsumption which is led to resource depletion there's a very interesting and cautionary note by warren buffet if you buy things you don't need soon you will have to sell things you need the time for complacency has passed we must act now to avert disaster failure to address the climate crisis will not only cost us economically but will also jeopardize the health and well-being of the future generation as we face this final countdown let us embrace transformative change before it is too late the choice is ours don't depend on on big nations or political leaders or big companies it's you who can make a change stand up and be counted or continue to be led down towards the path of self destruction the stakes could not be higher Human- humanity's survival depends on it thank you for listening and if you like what you see and hear then please press the subscribe button and until next time see you guys bye bye thank you